Seats, grab seats. My topic today is a very important topic because I just want you guys to know I, before PHP agency, coming out of Chicago, I served eight years in the Marine Corps. And when I get somebody, by the, by the way, where's all the veterans at? Veterans, all rise. Veterans, stand up, please. I'm not taking a shine for this. I'm not taking a shine for this. You guys served just as much as I did. Veterans, 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 veterans. Nice. Veterans, 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 vets, 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 vets. I salute you. Get some. Semper freaking Fi. God bless America. Thank you for your service. Get some. So, last night I talked about 1996 being, in my life, the year of change. Here's why. I just came back from a combat deployment. And in that same year, Check this out. It was an awesome year. I got married. Got divorced. Had a kid. Filed bankruptcy. That was my year of change. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm laughing now. By the way, how many guys have experienced that maybe over a four or five year period? I decided to do things faster. First, first, first two, right, David? First two. All in one year, I decided to knock it out my... I got my life and never revisit ever again. There was a life before she and I, was, I became a single father of three children. Uh, one of my children here is here right now. It was Melani right there. Baby, can you stand up real quick? It's Melani, my baby. My baby. But this, is, this, this industry, for the last 23 years of my life, I've been a part of. This is, I'm talking about 1999. I, get far, I first started in business. I got started in business with... I didn't even have a cell phone. How many of you guys remember those days? How many of you guys remember back in the days you had maybe like a Sprint PCS phone or a Nextel? They did, right? And, and, then, and then you had subscriptions that were like 200 bucks a month for 150 minutes. You guys remember those days? And somebody called you during, a, during 10 o'clock in the morning. It's not during your free hours because it's free before 7 a.m. and after 7 p.m. You remember those days? And you put, hey, wait, 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 right? Hey, you're using my minutes, right? Call me after 7 p.m. because it's free. Ah. You guys remember those days? <laughs> that's the era I grew up in. And so uh, that's when AOL first came out with their CDs. And you connect with a fax line. And remember, remember you were at the house and you connect on the internet and AOL, you're in a chat room, you're chatting away with somebody. And then somebody in another room picks up the phone and they disconnect your internet connection. Ah, I have the phone. I'm in the middle of a hot conversation. It was my era, okay? And so I've been doing this now for 23 years of my life. I've put a ton of money in our policy. I was, asked, I was just asking Sheena, just one of, one of our policies, we're putting in 5000 6000 a month 
just one of our projects, I completely forgot about it. I think we spent like 30 or 40,000 a month receiving in all of our life insurance policies, which is a far cry because you know what I used to make in the military? I used to make $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. By the way, all my veterans, you got kind of relate to that pay, right? You guys know we can get paid a lot. You put our life on line for what? Less than minimum wage. But as soon as I got married, as soon as I got divorced, as soon as I had a kid, as soon as I started to, to file bankruptcy, went through the bankruptcy proceedings, my life was a mess. And I, I started asking myself, what's going on in my life? What's going on in my finances? For those of you in the top row, we didn't forget about you. But what's going on in my life? What's going on in your life? And so I was reading this best-selling novel, book, instruction manual called The Bible. And, you know, everybody says, you know, read the book of John, right? No, I just cracked it open and said, you know, I see all these rap jams called Psalms. And then I flipped it over to read these things called Proverbs. And I was reading these Proverbs. I'm like thinking, wait a minute, hold up. Wait, they talk about money in the Bible? I thought it was, you know, like, you know, David and Goliath. I thought it was like, you know, Jesus born in Bethlehem. I didn't know they were talking about money in the Bible. And there's a proverb in there. It talked about how a man thinks. If you want to change your life, you got to change the way you. Mom, can you stand up real quick? There's my mother. Mom, can you stand up real quick? Okay. So this is my mother. She's five one and three quarters. She, she doesn't want me to leave out the three quarters. I'm five one and three quarters. You keep leaving out the three quarters. Okay. Five one and three quarters. So I'm Filipino. That means my mother's a what? Correct. She's a nurse. The stereotype is funny because it's true. But her first step in America, learning nursing school in the Philippines, she came with 100 bucks in her pocket. Her first job as a full-time registered nurse was 600 bucks a month. Imagine that. As a registered nurse, $600 a month. In her first house, it was in the west side of Chicago. West side? Right? Mayfield and Thomas, if you guys know where that neighborhood's at. Right, Mayfield and Thomas, west side. Okay? It was the first neighborhood. And so I remember my father leaving to escort my mom to the bus stop to make sure she's safe and protected because the west side of Chicago isn't necessarily the safest part of town. But it's how we started thinking about money, how we started thinking about relationships, we changed things. So I'm going to share with you this quick poem before I jump in seven points. Everybody, read this with me together. Read this with me together. One, two, three. Mine is a master power that molds and makes, and man is mine, and evermore he takes. The tool of thought and shaping what he wills brings forth a thousand joys, a thousand ills. He thinks in secret, and it comes to pass. The environment is but his looking glass. Pretty profound uh, poem there, right? By the way, this is a great book for you guys to consider reading, As a Man Thinketh. And so, in Scripture, in Proverbs, the context of, as a man thinketh, so is he in his heart, is a conversation of you enjoying a meal with a brother or sister. And the brother or sister is giving you a meal, but in his heart, he doesn't really want to give you that meal. So, in other words, the outward actions don't, don't match up with the what? The heart, the mind, the soul, the spirit. You're just giving to give superficially, but inside your heart is never really done with character. So talk about these seven things. Thought and character. You are what you think. Your character is the sum of all your thoughts. Thoughts turn into actions. We always talk about in MSM, how you think things is how you see things. And how you see things is how you do things. And how you do things is the results that you get in your life. But it starts originally with what? Thoughts. I remember going through a period in my life where I was in dating relationships and I thought my, in the back of my head, okay, I'm cutting this off after six months. I'm cutting this off. This, guys, I'm just sharing a little bit of my, my, my life. I hope you guys don't judge me for it. But I said to myself, I'm going to date this girl for six months and I'm going to cut it off. Why? Because I thought in my mind I wasn't deserving of a decent relationship. I went through marriage, divorce, kids, bankruptcy, all in one year. Traumatic point in my life. So I go through the relationships, and six months, I'm done. And guess what happened? Six months after, actually, the relationship was doing quite well. <laughs> so, it's cool. But guess what I started doing? Create self-defeating 
habits to make her want to break up with me. Because I didn't have the balls to cut it off myself. Right? And so I get involved in relationships where it really wasn't deserving because I wasn't ready for a relationship. For example, if you're not ready to become wealthy because you don't think you deserve to be wealthy, you will not become wealthy. You guys get it? So as thought and character here, you control your character. No matter what happens to you, no matter what happens externally, you still have the responsibility to say, hey, I can, I can still perform internally, but based on my thoughts, actions, beliefs, and behaviors. You're always in control of your thoughts. Here's the effect of thought and circumstances. How many of you have, have circumstances that happen to you all the time, yes? Think of your mind like a garden. You can cultivate it or you can let it run wild. What happens if you let a garden run wild? What starts growing? Weeds. What happens to the soil? It hardens. You have a choice. Either you remove your useless and immoral thoughts or two, let those weeds and then a hardening of your heart and spirit, like just like the hardening of the soil, take over. So therefore it doesn't take in new seed. It doesn't take in new thoughts. It doesn't take a new behaviors that helps you improve your life if you want to become financially independent and financially free. When you believe your circumstances are the result of outside forces, you are then controlled by them. Listen, if you came to PHP agency with problems, please stand up. If you got problems in your life because you came to PHP, you're broke, you're behind on debt, you went through a divorce, you got baby mama drama, baby daddy drama, things aren't going with your wife, your neighborhood you don't like to live in, the, the car you don't like to drive. If you got problems, stand up because PHP you thought was a driver to help you get what you want. Look at this. So do you think you're the only person in your team, in your office, in your base shop, in your hierarchy that's got problems? So why do you think you're the only one without problems? And you share those problems with everybody else actually looking for a, looking for an excuse, looking for an out not to perform. So by the way, I just want to encourage you to as well. If you came to PHP with problems, welcome home. <laughs> we got you back. All right, grab seats, grab seats. What happens during times of trouble and problems? You learn who you are. Listen, I've learned more people, no, I've learned more about people, not in the good times, but it's in the bad times. Like, one, like the question I asked Dion, how do you test character? One of the ways I test character is I want to see how you go through a loss. You didn't get recognition that you, saw, you thought you deserve. You didn't make the income you thought you were supposed to make. You dealt with the chargeback. Anybody have those? You dealt with somebody that's quitting on your team. How do you deal with a loss? And then you take it personal as if it's your problem. Do you know the reason why people quit the business? Is it because of you? No, it's because of them. Because the thoughts manifested into things which allowed them to quit. The opposite is true. If you manifest thoughts that make you stick with it, to stay committed, to double down, improve your discipline, accountability, and, and determination to get what you want, guess what happens to your life? You start expecting the this platform to win. Next thought, there's thoughts on health and body. You think your health and your body affects the way you are successful? Of course. Remember we were playing that game with Dion? If you don't feel good, you don't do good. If you don't do good, Ain't going to be good, right? But if you, come on, coach, let's do it. Because if you look good, you feel, feel good. good. And if you feel, feel good, good, you play good. If you play good, they pays good. <laughs> all, the, all the men, you good. I'm good. Make sure on the way out, tell the ladies what we just did, all right? <laughs> right? But your thoughts and effects have a behavior in your body. Listen, do you think there's a difference between stress and pressure? Okay, there's a difference, yes? What do you deal with when you deal with a situation? And no matter what you do, you still got to go through that situation. What's that called? No matter what you do, you, you still got to deal with that burden. It's called stress. Correct? I hate this job. I hate this job. I hate this job. I hate this job. But you're still there. That's stress. Because you allowed yourself to position yourself in that stressful behavior because you don't have a plan B. Yes? Well, guess what you can experience now in business? You experience what? Pressure. And you put it on you. When you decide to put the pressure on you, guess what happens? It's a little bit better. You know why? Because sometimes you can, you can kind of ease off the pressure, or better yet, here's how you ease off the pressure. Man, this weight is too great. Awesome. Build a team. 
Build a company. Because guess who helps keep you carry that weight? Guess who helps you share pressure? This event doesn't happen just with MSM. This happen, event happens because of WTP. Why? We are sharing the pressure. This, happen, this doesn't happen without alliance. Why? Because we're sharing the pressure. This doesn't happen without cornerstone because we're sharing the pressure. You guys get it? This company doesn't have, the company overall doesn't happen without TGA. Why? Because we're sharing the pressure. It's a cool feeling I have. When you decide what you do, and you go out and fight for your dreams and your goals, and it's not based on stress. I can't tell you, for 23 years, I felt stress. For 23 years, I felt pressure. Why? Because my babies need to eat. There's pressure on me. It depends on what they want to eat. You have conversations with my daughter. One of my favorite memories that my daughter reminds me of today, she's 20 years old today. She was probably, I always remember going to sleep, and in the middle of the night, we'd wake up, and we'd find you reading. We'd find you behind a computer studying. You know why? Because when you're sleeping, I wanted to get what? Better. Because I thought this business could take me somewhere. What about thought and purpose? Aimlessness invites aimlessness. What's aimlessness mean? You're not clear what you want. For example, how many of you raise your hand if you want to be financially up top? I see you guys. I see you. Don't think we forgot because we can't see you. Up top in, 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 in bleachers. Here we see you. How many of you guys want to be financially free? Yes? Yes, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah. Now, here's my next question. You guys got it? What's the number? What's the number you got to make on a monthly basis to outweigh your expenses and you still have money left over? What is that number? At the count of three, shout it out. One, two, three. What, what, about 80% of you didn't even answer. The other 20% wasn't sure. Okay, think about the number now. What number do you need to make on a monthly basis above your expenses and you still have money left over because that's considered what? Financial freedom. What's the number you got to make on a monthly basis for you to feel that way? One, two, three. Good, better. For those of you that still didn't answer, you're aimless. You're aimless. You don't even know where you're focused at. If I told you, hey, come to Daytona Beach, Florida. Where? Don't know. Just get here. Well, which airport? Don't know. Just find a way. What's the name of the venue? Go, oh, figure it out. Whatever you told you that stuff. Did you ever get the day told you to be at a health and ocean center to come here to this event? No, because you want, it would be what? You'd be aimless. If somebody says, get to my house, and it said, well, okay, let's say you don't know where the person lives. Okay? You don't know where that person lives. Come to my house, I, I, like for example, uh, give me an address in Puerto Rico, because they're not normal addresses. Yeah, give me an average in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come to my house in Caguas. Great. What's the address? No, 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 don't give me your real address. But give me a typical address. Yes. Yeah. So, do we, we, have, we have a microphone? Hold on. Okay. What, what, what's, what, what, what's, it, what's an address? Here. Rio Grande State, calle CIA, número F7, Rio Grande, Puerto Rico, 00745. First of all, what's the number? I'm thinking about 253, because he gave me the number at the... And he said, no, no, no. That, that's, that's what I figured. Uh, hey, listen, my Spanish, my Spanish is only as good as ordering tacos. That's all I got. Okay? All I know is ordering some cafe con leche, right? Has some sazon in my rice, right? Mofongo, rapateles. That's all I know. That's, 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 that's about it. Woo. Con quechu. Con quechu. Okay? Patele con quechu. Damn Puerto Rican neighborhood I grew up around. Okay? Let me get a quarter weapon with checks. Okay, that's another story. Okay, thought and purpose. If I don't know the address, I am what? Aimless. And that's the way you guys, some of you guys and gals, go through your financial life aimless. Next one. Thought, factor, and achievement. In order to achieve, you must put forth an effort and you must sacrifice. How many of you guys at the beginning of the year got a gym membership? Raise your hands. You got a gym membership to raise your hands. Okay. You know there was a what? Cost. 
to what? Going to the gym. And he started going to the gym. He's like, oh, man. Oh. How many guys had leg day? Right? And you try to sit down. And he just, he, there's no sitting. He just crashed in the toilet. Blah. Yo, man, leg day, bro. And he got fearful about the next leg day. But, so, but in order to achieve, what does your body, what does your body know it needs to grow? It needs to what? It needs sacrifice and dealing with pain. So if you're trying to get something for free without paying the price, you never respect it. You're not going to respect it. Right now, if I give you a million, by the way, I'd love for you guys to be cash flow millionaires one day. I can't tell you how, many, how, how good it feels to be a flipping cash flow millionaire, especially coming after making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. I wish I could just give it to you. But if I just gave it to you, you would not what? Respect it. Let me, let me test this with you real quick. Let me share with you a story. How many have children? Okay. How many guys purchase gifts, buy gifts for your kids during Christmas time? Yes? Okay. You work for it. You went to go shop for it. You wrapped it with love. Put it under the tree. Expecting what top when they open the present? Excitement. Reaction. Why? Because who paid the price? Okay. So the kids open it. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. That's it? You have an hour to work for the Xbox, box. For them chairs. You've been wanting this entire year. Thanks, Mom. That's all I get. And then what's worse is the week after. When the toys or the gifts, whatever, is just laying all over the house. And what are you saying? Put that. Put that away. <laughs> Why do you care where they put it? It's not yours. You know what I mean? Why? Because who paid the price? You did, did they? So even if I could show you how to become a board counsel, become a first generation cash flow millionaire, you'd not respect it unless you pay the price and had sacrifice for it. Next one. Vision and ideals. If you cherish a dream, vision, or a deal in your heart, you will one day realize it. Do you really cherish being financially free and financially independent? Do you really want to take care of your mom and dad? Do you really want to make sure you have access and opportunities for your children? Do you really? If so, one day you will realize it. And for the first time in my entire life, my mother's right here. My father's not. And I remember my, my Mother asking, Matt, I need you to come to the house. For what? I need you to watch your dad. Watch my dad for what? Well, I need to go to the store. So go to the store. No, I'm afraid that something with your dad. What? Like that? What would happen? Oh, he just had some hit heart issue. Like that? So I went to the house, and for the first time I took a selfie. For the first time in my entire life, I recognized that I was babysitting my father. And I'm telling myself, listen, I know how this goes because I'm in the business of retirement planning. I know how this goes because I clients with this same, same situation. Now it's happening to me. And uh, make a long story short, we're matriculating my mother and father down to Dallas from Chicago, right? <laughs> Tell them And so my, my sister is doing all the legwork. Okay, Kuya. Filipinos, what does Kuya mean? Older brother. Hey, Kuya. Hey, da, 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 da. Here's five. Oh. How much does it cost? I Kuya, I don't know. It's expensive. What do you mean expensive? Psh, psh, nothing. You kidding me? For my mom and dad, nothing. Oh, in the early 2000s, because I got involved in financial services, I got financially educated. I needed to purchase my parents a long-term care policy. And guess what? We started acting. We go, hey, Kuya, guess what pays for mom and dad's long, guess what pays for mom and dad's retirement committee, home health care committee, the long-term care policy. So this thing got even sweeter. So I made sure the quality care, quality care for my parents was at the highest it can be provided. Why? Because of vision and ideals. Do you want to change your circumstances? Dream of a vision of an ideal life and strive to reach it. Why should the rich people have all the fun? Well, why don't you become rich? Okay, repeat after me. Affirmation. Ready? If you believe this is you. Okay. Here we go. Check this out. Guess what, the, guess what the affirmation is? I am rich. If you want it. Oh, okay. You guys want to say it. One, two, three. I am rich. Say it from your chest. I am rich. Say it from your spirit. I am rich. 
Sin from a soul. How good does it feel? Yeah, you see it. That's what I'm talking about. Now you got to go. Now you got to go work for it. It's affirmations. All right, thank you. Serenity. I remember, guess what happens when you start becoming financially free, financially independent? You start being on a team. You fight through all the circumstances. Your vision ideas are starting to manifest itself. You feel what? Serenity and peace. The calmer you are, the more successful you'll be. You know, the coolest thing about coming to Dallas, relocating from Chicago, is in Dallas, excuse me, in Chicago, I'd rent an office from anybody who rent me an office. What's, uh, uh, when I get started in business, I have a very low credit score. What's the lowest, we're all my credit experts here, what's the lowest credit score you can get? Th was it 350? 350, okay, I had a 250 credit score. <laughs> oh, my credit was bad. Like, we'll never issue credit again. You just need to die and just reincarnate yourself into another person because your credit's so damn bad, get a new social, social security number. But the calmer you are, guess what happened? We started making money, we started making money, we started making money, we started making saving money, making money, saving money, making money, and saving money. Okay? Everybody thinks that I'm an overnight success. I just want to give you guys some, some heads up. It took us three years to become a cash flow millionaire PHP agency. 37 months. I've been at this thing before PHP for 14 years. We made money, save money, made money, save money, made money, save money. So we moved to Dallas. And we're looking for new office space. And I'm looking through the office space. Nah, nah, eh, nah. And I realized for a moment that, you know what? I'm telling these guys no because I qualified for the lease in 30 minutes. And I didn't have to accept whatever they were just going to throw out my way. I felt free and I felt calm. Because I had money tucked away. To be wise, you must master negative thoughts. A truly wise person knows how to control thoughts rising from grief, fear, anxiety, and doubt. By the way, you heard what Dion said about going through a divorce? How do you think about yourself after going through a divorce, after a breakup, after losing, after a financial reversal? How do you feel about yourself less? Or you say, you know what? I'm going to shake this off. I'm going to get better and it's still attack and still play offense. Or are you playing defense? Which is better? It's a wrap-up last slide. What you think is what you'll be. There's only so much I can do. I'll do my part to feed you hope, vision, and help and assistance, but you got to do your part. And part of doing your part is thinking it. So what are you thinking right now? Hey, you should get ready for tonight's gala night. You guys ready to get that? You about the toxins, get their makeup? And if you don't like the way your life is right now, then consider flipping changes as we depart from this place to get ready for tonight's gala. I want you to realize that tonight we're going to be celebrating success tonight, recognition at the highest levels tonight. And I want you to envision tonight, whether you're getting recognition or not getting recognition, what your future life can be if you consider thinking differently about money. Because you can't get here if you think down here. With that being said, guys, I'll see you guys tonight at the gala. Two meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. Be money smart. Can you God bless you guys. Too deep. We can't be I said too wild. Too deep. We can't be beat. I said too wild. Too deep. We can't be beat. I said too wild. Too deep. We can't be beat. I said too wild. Too deep. We can't be beat.